Number 94, an LC circuit consists of a 3 uh, milli Henry inductor and a 5 microfarad capacitor. Letter A, find its impedance at 60 hertz. Oh my goodness, not this problem again. Um, so LC circuit, notice there's no R in it, therefore there's no resistance. So what that means is that in order to find the impedance here, which is the resistance squared plus then the difference between the reactive inductance and the reactive capacitance squared, uh, just since there's no resistance, just go boom, boom, boom. See you later. Okay. So now this works out to be the difference between the reactive inductance and the reactive capacitance. And these both have their own formulas, right? So remember back to the prior problems we've done in the 80s, 70s, and 80s. All right. Not the years, but the number of problems in this chapter. So uh, the inductive uh, or the reactive inductance was 2 pi multiplied then by the frequency times the inductance. And that's going to be then minus now the reactive capacitance, which is then 1 over basically 2 pi times the frequency then multiplied by the capacitance. Okay. And now this whole thing is going to be squared, right? The whole difference here. Okay. The whole difference. So now, isn't that nice and neat? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write it out for 60 and then I'm just going to do the calculation with the 10 kilohertz because, uh, my hand is hurtsing. <laughs> We're going to have now 2 pi multiplied by the frequency here of 60 hertz. Okay. Multiplied then by the uh, impedance, uh, not impedance, excuse me, the inductance. This is 3 milli. You know we need that in uh, Henry's, not milli Henry. So multiply that by 10 to the minus third. Okay. Then what we're going to do, we'll take this, okay, and subtract now. 1 over 2 pi times the frequency again of 60 multiplied by another capacitance of 5 microfarad. So this is 5 times 10 to the minus 6th, okay? And then this whole thing now, so let me see how I place, okay? So now this whole thing, let me put another big bracket over here. And now this whole thing has to be squared. Don't forget that. And then we can now calculate. Okay. So let's do this. So 2 pi times 60 times 3 times 10 to the minus third. Okay. We get that value. Then minus now, parenthesis. 1 divided by parenthesis 2 pi times 60 times 5 times 10 to the minus sixth. Okay. Close the parentheses. And then take your result and square it. And then we square root that value and we get 529 ohms. All right. So that there is the uh, impedance. All right. Now then that's at 60 hertz. And the only thing that's now going to change um, is that it's no longer going to be 60. Instead, now it's going to be 10 times 10 to the third. Okay. So we just 10 times 10 to the third. So why don't we do those out now? All right. Fun. So let's do, um, all right, 2 pi times then 10 times 10 to the third times 3 times 10 to the minus third. And then subtract now the 1 divided by parenthesis now, 2 pi uh, times 10 times 10 to the third times then 5 times 10 to the minus 6. Close those parentheses. Square the result and then square root it, which is basically just the same thing, right? Um, <clears throat> all right, and then this is going to work out to be now 185 ohms, all right, 185. So notice if you have an inductor and a capacitor, as you, on average, as you increase the frequency, you will lower the overall impedance, all right? And uh, yeah, that's that. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Please help us out by subscribing and liking the videos. All right. If you don't like them, you can still hit the button. Take care.